evening, fellow commissioners and empty room. Uh, this meeting of the Hanson Conservation Commission is being now ca is called to order, and it is open under the State Wetland Protection Act, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Hanson Local Bylaw, Article 3-13, Section 5. This opening statement will apply for business to conduct at this meeting. And as per usual procedure, it's being recorded for the audio record. Uh, roll call, please. Edwin Hill. T.J. Rogan. Dave Matthew. Sarah McCord. Phil Clennon. Lon Woodward. Frank Scalinger. We have 100% of our seated commissioners present and our associate commissioner and our staff, so we will proceed with our agenda. The uh, first item on our agenda, which is scheduled for 7 o'clock, which is just a few moments ago, uh, the agenda calls for a continued notice of intent to construct two uh, bituminous concrete roadways, etc. This is the EP number SE 7150750. We are in receipt of a request, a written request from the applicant to continue the hearing to our July 19th meeting. Uh, do I hear a motion to? Allow that continuation and can, can, and can I just ask a question? Sure. Maybe? Sure. Um, is that email from the peer reviewer as well as the engineer as well? No, I'm talking about the one that talked about meeting with planning and all that. Well, um, I think not. Uh, however, what we'll do is we'll have a motion in a second, then we'll have a very brief discussion because the hearing is remains open, but we won't be obviously won't be doing anything substantive right. tonight. But we'll just make our administrative plans. Okay. So do I hear a motion to continue uh, that hearing to July 19th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m.? So we'll so hear a second? Second. Uh, by way of discussion, I'll just say that uh, the peer reviewer has reached the point now where their comments are, are no longer draft. They are uh, in final form. Uh, they have been communicated very, very recently, I think just today, to the applicant. The applicant also today requested this uh, this continuance and any other ad administrative considerations by the conservation office the commission uh, deliberations and that sort of thing which are part of the public record will have to be done at a routine called con uh, conservation meeting uh, there might be some other administrative steps to take in the meantime but um, I don't I don't know how widely any of those other discussions were, were uh, distributed, but um, suffice to say, the uh, the necessary uh, background work is continuing and, and ongoing and will be commenced in a public manner at the uh, July 19th meeting if we vote for it. So, any further discussions or questions or comments as staff or anyone else? Seeing none. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Abstaining. Okay. We have a 401 vote by the commission to continue to July 15th, 7.30 p.m. And that will hold that for now. Uh, may I'll just ask the staff for a second. Uh, was this continuation request communicated to any of the public, or did this happen to not show up? No, I forwarded it to uh, the email list. Oh, okay. So they were well informed and they've acted accordingly. Yeah, I put a sign Good. out here too, just in case. Good. I was hoping that that convenience would be done, so thank you very much for doing that. We have minutes from June 7th, 2023, in our. Well, oh, I didn't get a chance oh, to them yet. The minutes would have been considered if we had not been so busy that we hadn't had a chance to prepare them. That's what I'm hearing. July, uh, June 7th minutes are still in preparation. Okay. We will, I'm sure, ask them those at our very next meeting. Before we have our 8 p.m. agenda item, which is on the list next, uh, we have approximately 50 minutes to do other business. So let's look at the lower part of our agenda. Uh, under discussions, we have a request for an extension to the blanket order of conditions. This is, uh, I'll just read what it says, even though we probably all know what it is. Routine maintenance, repair, passive recreational trails, and land stewardship opportunities that do not adversely affect wetland resources and our buffer zone at various open space parcels 
for the Hansen Conservation Commission and Hansen Trails Committee. This has, as it has had from the beginning, DEP file number as indicated, and uh, it's my understanding and experience that uh, this is a, basically was a notice of intent filed by and on behalf of open space, uh, uh, rather, uh, conservation and the trails committee for us to get permission to do work on our own property. Light, low impact, uh, things like signs and trails. And it went through the process. We have renewed it several times and it's time to renew again. Uh, there is available in the files, and actually there's a copy right here too, of that original paperwork. Uh, there's a, uh, a narrative which constitutes a, uh, a little bit lengthy, but just very, very informative description of the sort of work this enables. We've said many times in our meetings, the work we do for trails, for signs, that kind of sort of thing, is covered by that. But time to renew, and because it's a, it's an official thing, uh, we would need to request an extension to that uh, blanket order of conditions and have a motion and vote most of the second vote to do that. Any questions about the topic? It's one of the best tools we have in our toolbox, and uh, I've been advocating it for years to other commissions, and some of them just go, whoa, how about that? So, entertain a motion to request this, this extension as described. How many years? Five. For five years, a five-year extension. Do I hear a second? Hey, do you hear a second? Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. <coughs> five zero zero. We are voting to request this five year extension. And here is the document we will sign. Right? Yeah. So for the request. Right. Oh, okay. Right. The first page has the space. By the way, I have seen with a good deal of satisfaction the signs that uh, Blonde and her people have created, and uh, I'm thinking of oh, uh, the wooden sign. Yeah, wooden sign yeah. that have been posted by our uh, faithful workers, so people know DEC is aware of what kind of things do. I think it's just good practice to use those signs. So thank you for doing that. Oh. So that is addressed. That can be checked off. The next thing to discuss is a request for certificate of compliance for 680 Main Street, Map 41, Lot 5-2 from Mike Yosu. This requires a vote and signature. Uh, perhaps our staff, Dr. Skellinger, could just briefly review that. Um, this uh, order of conditions was issued to uh, Emil Taya some time ago to build a house and put in a septic system at this address down on Main Street. And uh, some time ago uh, in the fall, he requested a certificate of compliance and I asked him to hold off until the spring to allow for growth around the property so that everything would be vegetated. So I've gone down and inspected and the growth is there. It's, it's uh, growing nicely and healthily. And 
So I'm recommending that you uh, approve his certificate of compliance just to make sure I cover it. Um, the order of conditions required that he do some mitigation uh, because of his driveway encroaching on the 50-foot buffer. He had a variance to do that, but the um, uh, variance was conditioned on him providing some plantings along the driveway. And as it turns out, nature has done all that for him. There's no place to plant anything. So we have talked about him uh, providing some money that would compensate for that uh, to buy plants that the commission would then use to put somewhere else. Uh, and in his case, we asked him to pay for the chestnuts, which he has done. And so that'll be the next item on the agenda is to accept that gift. Or is that is that the gift we're accepting? Yes. Yeah. So in sum, I uh, recommend you approve his certificate of compliance. Very good. Thank you. Uh, having heard that, the chair would be happy to entertain a motion to approve this request for certificate of compliance of 680 Main Street. So moved. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Sustaining? 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Request is approved. There should be a piece of paper. Yes, there is. Migration. There should be mitigation. Mitigation. What did I write? Migration. Migration. <laughs> mitigation. Migration. We, uh, should be we mitigation. are we are observing this. It's a uh, it's a fascinating concept. Migration. We're doing I'm alternate like, migration. Yeah, that's right. All right. Just um, the I am informed by a reliable source. This the gentleman's last name is pronounced Yosway. So we. Will better educated. Well, he spells it the way we were. We well, it's uh, so many things are not pronounced the way they're spelled. We all do our best though every day with this wonderful language. Uh, so branch of the country that yeah. The next item, as we <coughs> wrap up those signatures, is. Uh, relates to this, uh, the acceptance of a donation for uh, an alternative mitigation uh, located on Hanson Conservation Properties from Michael Yosway. This does require a vote. The dollar amount of this one so is $300. And this again is to purchase materials related to the valuable chestnut concept that we are working on. So, Chair would entertain a vote to accept this $300 donation as described. Further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? 5-0-0. Zero, zero. The donation is accepted by us. I think there's an administrative step involving the uh, Board of Selectmen because we don't quite have the smooth set of tools for handling these things that we would like to have, maybe we'll have in the future. But this is a necessary step, so thank you for that. Still only 7.20, long before our 8 p.m. appointment, so let's continue on down our list. Conservation property status and property management. Uh, 
there probably are a few assorted things to report to each other. Looking for uh, any voluntary reports along those lines. Oh, oh uh, Steve. Um, yeah, after the last meeting, I went off. I got the, um, the air repellent. Mm -hmm. uh, took my bonder up there. I have the course treatment for a uh, large area like that, where it's a good open space, is uh, once a week for three weeks, followed by monthly. So I got two of the big jugs of that. Um, Spread it up with the bonder, the whole area. Uh, on the first Friday after, so about a week after they were originally planted, yeah. uh, they did have a little bit of transplant shock, which was pretty pretty normal. No. They, they had kind of bent over and the tips were a little bit, you know, they looked bad. Yeah. Uh, a week later, they had bounced back. They're looking good now. Um, we had a few rain events, I think, which yeah. have greatly helped. It did, yeah. And it looks like we're getting like a week of rain coming tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Don't have to time with the flag here? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they were polite enough to leave the flags in place. Um, as best I can tell, and I was there last Friday, so I de I've done it the last two Fridays, and I'll be out there again in a couple of days. Okay. Um, uh, all of them are fine right now. There, there's not one of them that's uh, either dead or on the bill or or by here. I, uh, I did take a look at, at most of them not too long ago, probably in between your know, visits, and like you said, it was, uh, you could tell they'd taken a little bit of a shock to. They had blue green systems. That's but it's completely normal, completely expected. And with some assistance from uh, wherever rain comes from, that, that can only help us. Uh, not having at least yet a, a long dry spell is the best thing we could possibly have hoped for, having planted it when we did. Yeah. So. The fogger guy it sprayed a mist 20 feet out, so I literally did the entire area around it. Just ah. to make sure that they don't, I didn't just only spray the plants. I did. I gave them like a 30 foot barrier around. That is very sensible. The deer that uh, we have around here are just so plentiful and hungry all the time. The more we include them, the better. Yeah. We let's hope for the best. Yeah. Thank you for that. Have you submitted the? Uh, Bill, the invoices and things? Or, Not yet. Or the, Not yet. I, I got to figure out the paperwork. Lon will speak yeah. to us about okay. reimbursements and the, and the ending of the fiscal year very soon. So. Yeah. Yeah. I have another point of uh, question about Smitty's. I just got this from Chris. That is, is in Smitty's. He wants to know what our thoughts are. Oh, that is a duck blind yeah. that has been there for quite some time. Yeah. Don't know its heritage. Don't know the people responsible. Um, I don't have a cut and dried response on it. Uh, what we're seeing, what we're being shown, is a uh, digital photo of a uh, wooden duck hunting blind that exists within the footprint of Indian Head Pond. Don't know how long it's been there. Duck hunting is a traditional activity. Uh, hunting is considered a passive uh, form of recreation. But that's a structure <laughs> that we had didn't authorize. Um, thoughts are welcomed. Uh, thoughts, comments, and questions are welcomed by the chair on this. Yes, sir. I'm just talking to myself. So there's no hunting allowed, right? No, that's not true. Hunting is allowed on conservation land as long as all the laws are obeyed regarding setbacks from from uh. Uh, homes and structures like that, uh, structures like uh, you know, occupied by people. Uh, Hanson has never had a no hunting bylaw per se. People have always, whether they have not, have always governed themselves by the state laws. And there are laws. You're supposed to have permission for private property. And you're supposed to obey the season and many other things. Uh, and. We have had that question come up a number of times in our Beck used to get called now and then, but the answer is we don't prohibit it. State laws say we well, can and can't do it. We have had the luxury of not having to tackle that head on. But this is an interesting thing. Um, you, you have seen it? I've seen that. Uh, wasn't really excited by it. Didn't make it my highest priority to deal with it at that time. But there's an interesting sidelight to this too. 
uh, when, remember when we were planting the trees, uh, there was a gentleman who walked his dog through there, he was very familiar with the area. He indicated he had seen uh, activity by people who he believes to be the most avid local dog hunters, manipulating water structures in other parts of the property, like where we in the special interest of have painstakingly uh, adjusted lock in place with padlocks where we want the water levels to be. And these have frankly been vandalized. Would you characterize it otherwise, Dave? No, I can describe that. Yeah. To the point of cutting off our locks and doing other things. Yeah. 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 This suggests to me that some education is called for. If we're going to continue to, if we mean the town, it's going to continue to allow hunting on conservation property, we need hunters to behave. And behavior includes not vandalizing. And I think it also includes not constructing structures. I mean, I could see a person snipping a bush to stand behind in, in hip wade that's on the edge of a pond if you want to hunt that. But I'm not a fan of that much structure. And what could happen is we, with whatever resource we have, we could disassemble that sucker and have it go away and then see who comes out of the woodwork to uh, uh, engage in conversation. Steve, you have a thought? Oh, no, I'm always here to do it. Oh, okay. I'm sure yeah. Chris will be right all over it. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a, yeah, there is a, uh, I think I need to stay engaged with the hunting public just like with the bird watching public and the equestrian public. The difficult is we don't know who it is, so we can't reach out to them. They might come out to reach out to us. That's the thing. Uh, what we could do is, whatever we do, we'll do it, but then leave a solid, not on a piece of paper, but a solid sign saying, please contact the conservation office and invite them in to, to engage with us. And when they do, if and when they do, we will discuss several things. So my question would be, should we put that a sign to that effect up now, or should we remove it and put a sign up? This reminds me of a previous thing, different but parallel somewhat. There was a portable tree stand installed in some conservation land in another part of town a few years ago. Tree stand for deer hunting. <coughs> um, a neighbor who saw it didn't like it, and actually I went to check it out. It was actually a little bit too close to the houses. So we put a sign on it asking for it to be removed within like 30 days and like that. And it got removed. Well, yeah. Frankly, I think that that's a better approach than to take it down and leave it sign. I like that. Uh, because now, now we have dialogue, hopefully. Yeah. Or at least and probably. it invites people to retrieve materials they probably bought and paid for right. and undo the little bit of damage they've done. Yeah. And also, it could open a line of communication, take contact them. Um, sounds like perhaps a motion to have an appropriately worded notice uh, ruggedly posted on this. Could this I device. say something? Sure. Sure. If you put something in writing in a heavy duty Ziploc bag attached it to a tree where the fence had been, or well, to, the, to the structure itself. That's what we're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. The structure itself is certainly subject to being visited by the people who built it. And a sizable, weatherproof or weather resistant message can't help but be noticed. So, again, the chair is open to a motion to place an appropriately worded notice uh, requesting, not invite, but requesting the uh, responsible parties to remove the structure and to contact the conservation office at we'll give them the phone number. Do I get such a motion? Second. Um, simple as that. Polite, straightforward, but clear, and it I think will be helpful, sir. Could it mention that, that uh, something like uh, X number of days uh, before we take the down? Well, it's well, it's, it has been actively used the last couple of seasons, I think, and as you can see in the photo, there's still residue of vegetation, probably a cattail or something, that have been stuck up on it last fall. Yeah. Um, 
I think the next duck season opens early in October, so November the latest. But this is June, July, July, September. I think it's September first. That's just three days. That makes sense because a serious duck hunter probably would start looking around in no later than August at what their opportunities are this year. So I will, I believe uh, it makes sense to slightly amend the motion to include a deadline of September 1st. We could always extend the deadline if we so if they call us the day before and say, well, we're going to do it, but it's going to take us a couple weeks. You know, who, who knows what the discussion might be. We can extend it. But let's give them a few months, a couple of months, I guess that is, and then see what happens. Frank, your thoughts? This place is, first, are, are the boards back where they belong and locked in? Yeah, I... I Did you repair the damage? Yeah. Okay, so that, that's all set for now? Yeah, well, their lock is still on it, but I it's a lock. Whatever. They're in the right place. Right, yes. The, the point is that this property is under severe restriction from the federal government. And I don't believe we have uh, a use allowance for hunting. I will say this. When the whole property came into our possession, we looked at everything that the USDA had to say about it. Across the land, these wetlands, which are being reclaimed for wetlands rather than agriculture, uh, actually hunting is... Uh, uh, condoned by the USDA as a passive recreational activity. I, I don't know that you want to just assume that you have a, an approved use. There are special. We can we can reach out to the form of the the paper and we shall we will do that. But um, there was some special. I'm trying to think of the word. It was a. There were at least five. Uh, special conditions that we were allowed to do, things like have trails, put up signs, put up bird houses, mow two areas to keep a nice view, that went by the Hand Camp Point, uh, Camp Point Hill and then also in the pond, and there was something else too. Uh, well, I think we should research it because if we don't have, if hunting is not a then we should be putting in more hunting stuff. Well, or we should be applying for an approved use. Or, or my, or, or, well, well, on the or, on the motion at hand, either way, it's not applying to right. Yes, yes. So let's let's vote on that, and then we'll have a little bit more discussion. Um, if what you said is correct, though, and that the, the duck line's got to go no matter what, putting up a sign saying "I'm talking about well, keeping your duck line." Like well, 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 well. I'm not think I don't think any of us want to keep the duck line, even if they want to, because hunting ducks doesn't necessarily require an elaborate structure like this. Yeah. A lot of people will take a flat bottom boat, row into the cattails, and wait for ducks. They don't have to build something that frankly is an impact to a resource here. So, what would you propose the, uh, the vote on as conditional on researching? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. We want the blind to go, and that's what right. we're voting on. So, the line is not about whether or not they can keep the line. Yeah, the sign is us trying to be nice to them before we go take the yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Turn over the dialogue. Yeah. Here we are at the edge of suburbia with a lot of people, a few people who still have. Uh, it's a good point. Let's research the rules that govern this property. Make sure we're clear. And whatever it is we're clear, we're clear on, we'll go that way. But no matter what else we do, um, the sense of the commission is the blind needs to go. That shouldn't have been constructed. It was. It needs to not go, not stay there. So let's move to the vote. Uh, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Five, zero, zero. Uh, vote approved. Uh, but we will research the documents that we have, the, the deed from the USDA, which we inherited with the property. And also, this is a good opportunity to say the... Uh, 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 compatible use. That's what it is. Compatible use agreement. That was scheduled to renew every five years. I don't remember where we are in the cycle. Uh, We're just about ready to renew. Good point. 
there might be a couple other things we'd want to suggest. I remember in our discussions with Helen Castle and her predecessors at USDA, one or two things came up that would or could be uh, considered. Probably be a good segue into getting our money. Yeah, how about that? Now that we have expended most of it, not all but most. Um, so, good discussion, good topic. Much rather <coughs> work on things like that than some of the other things we have to work on. <laughs> okay, I have a couple of small things on profit. Sure, please uh, continue. Uh, we uh, probably going to need to set up some time. Maybe you receive uh, anybody else. Since now was else. Remember, Robin, I cleaned that up last year. It really needs that parking lot. Another policing of the uh, of yeah, I mean, trash. We, well, not just trash, but we whack it. It's okay. There are some multi floor road bushes that we should cut them off at ground level. And yes, they'll come right back, but it'll be easier to deal with the little shoots yeah. than the giant mess of the I'm looking to see that. We can. Multi floor rows. Yeah, that's one of the things that these blank order conditions, we just, it allows invasive removal. Multi floor rows or pasture rows is an invasive, just like not weed and so on. Right. So, what, what, all, all I'm bringing up is that, so you guys have some time, some time. I mean, Rob and I, it took us about a half a day. But that's one of our largest and again signature properties. Right now, the base secretary still goes through it. It's significant in, in many ways. So we should treat it as such. Yeah, so we have to clear clear the path of the kiosk and clear the parking lot. I, I, I don't know how much trash it is. It's mostly gold. Yeah. Anyway, so there's that. I painted the gate at um, Pierce Avenue in that uh, oh. gorgeous forest green color that we voted for. Nice. It looks very attractive. Um, I, I hope all the neighbors approve. Just, sure yes. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. So that's done. Um, and I met with Mary Ann today for other things. But yes. she also, it's very interesting. She wanted to know what could be done to help with trail maintenance type stuff. Tackle the Japanese knotweed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I kid you not, that's been my thought from a long time. If there was a group of people who every week or two went to the place where it intrudes on the trail, Cut it down, and then again go back or take turns go back and cut it down again. That is that's been proven. That doesn't work. So it doesn't get rid of it completely, but number one, it keeps the trail open. Yeah. Number two, you do it long enough, it will die. Well, you, because it has no photosynthesis, if you keep cutting it off, it's been known to live under volcanic eruptions for 30 years. It's also been known to be eradicated by persistent activity, and I'm uh -huh. just saying. Whether it, it truly eradicates or just cuts it back, something that could be done to yeah. Marianne's question. Right. We yeah. want the trail to be yeah. clear. Yeah. And, you know, lots of things will keep growing back. That one is actually one of the most that dramatic one of the ones. So yeah. this, the discussion ended up being a discussion about what what's the way to deal with things like that. Yeah. And uh, I threw all my everlasting hope that we'll end up with a adopt the trail type program where just like they do it unofficially at West, the West of Billings, yes. the neighbors take, or somebody steps up and says, we'll maintain it. And she's willing and eager to promote that. She's already done a lot on that property, not the path of conservation, but other paths that absolutely anticipate what will make it better for the public. And she's good at recruiting people well, to do that. Well, to that end, she is going to set up one of her, she does these cable access, interview type format things. Uh -huh. So. Sometime in mid-July, she's going to film one of them. She's invited me to take part, and if I have anyone else, I know what I would like to do. Then what we ought to do, I think by rights, is provide a little bit of structure that can be described. In that. That's what she was looking for. Because we kind of have a little bit of it, right? It begins with the volunteer waiver uh, responsibility form. But she's got um, maybe a description of what sorts of things they should be doing or should not be doing. Right? So, well, so the things I say that think that a lot of you folks are doing right now are part of that list. Right. Uh, litter control, uh, invasive species control, uh, what's been on the shoveling? I don't know. Uh, but there could be a very uh, sensible list of things well, that we're allowed to do. It, yeah, obvious stuff. Yeah. yeah. And there, it also might include a, a couple examples of things that go above and beyond what we would do. We don't want people uh, cutting down trees and building bridges without us right. being in, in charge of it. Yeah, and that's, that's not good. Yeah. 
At any rate, uh, that's a good idea. We should roll out for that. I think it makes sense. How do other people feel when that's that? Well, we can't hurt if we get the volunteers. Yeah. Right. Um, it reminds me of uh, there's a. We want to know when, when they're doing it or when they've done it. Well, I mean, I was just having an informal conversation with But what I told her was the normal course of events would be things like litter control and just as Phil said, you know, invasive stuff. And then if they found anything that was uh, significant, report, to, report to us yeah. to develop a plan to deal with I think there's, there is a model for that. Uh, a lot of the state forests and parks have friends from friends of the Miles Sanders State Forest friends. I actually went uh, to my great enjoyment uh, about seven or eight years ago. I went to a, a the annual sort of state meeting of State Forest Friends Group out in town up uh, when Dave Harris was a Christian, he was active in that sort of thing, and he put me on to that. Very interesting. There's people who are, say, living at Miles Sanders State Forest. There's a lot of things they do for and with the uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation, uh, completely authorized by them, very much appreciated by DCR, because they don't have tons of staff. They have a little staff and not much. And there's a list of things they do and some things they don't do. Uh, but it is a a seriously good type of program, and we can learn from that. Do they, do they have a, something we can access? We can I think they have it. a website. I think if you look at Friends, DTR. for example, uh, if you Google Friends of Miles Sanders State Forest, oh, okay. or that and DCR as well, uh, it would be very educational. Yeah, I'll look into that. Too. Yeah. Uh, could, be, could be the beginning of a good thing. Okay, so we're good with uh, that? Yeah, let's, let's keep it informal right now. Right. Let's pursue that. And it could be that maybe, let's say, depending on what the timing is with our meetings and that proposed time, we might have a draft or something we could vote on and say, we officially promote this as a guide yeah. to those folks. Okay. Yeah, and it, it will start with have a signed uh, volunteer uh, waiver form on file with us. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, so we know that uh, the town council is just waiting for a survey of a certain parcel on Brook Street, two parcels actually, uh, around where the stream goes under the road. Um, this parcel was uh, part of part of the parcel was given to us by town meeting uh, recently, and the other part of it was uh, previously given to us. So it's conservation property by town meeting, and we are attempting to get it officially deeded by the select board as part of the uh, area five well uh, effort. Mm -hmm. So, town council is holding us up for a recordable survey. The survey bids are in, and we have requested the water department to pay for it. We haven't heard back. Yeah, I've had a couple of discussions, either directly or indirectly, with uh, Jerry Davis on this and some related topics. One conversation took place this morning. Uh, don't have the feedback yet but he's aware of this. And uh, the range of the quotes we had, there's, there's three quotes. They're all more or less in the same ballpark. It's, it's less than $10,000 is what the cheapest one is like four or five, and the highest one is like eight or something. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the four to eight range. So that request, as Frank says, is on the table to them. It's in their interest to, uh, well, they're, they're engaged in a process right now of getting what they call extra credits. There are a certain amount of credits that DEP calculates for allowing the development of, of a new wellhead uh, area, well site area. And by protecting and uh, delineating, not delineating, but by protecting more open space. Uh, in the town, the water department can get those credits. 
and we are working very actively to help them with that. So I am cloaking that uh, track in the same cloak as they're trying to get those credits with. So good job getting those figures. Now we just need to actually get it done. Um, anything else? I don't have any new information on open space acquisition. Uh, I'll ask our, our visitor here. You here for the 8 p.m. request for 126 Pierce Avenue? Yes. Okay. Um, it's not quite 8 o'clock yet, and on the theoretical concept that other people who are interested might pop in, we're going to take a few more minutes to do some paperwork, but then we'll get right on it, on or maybe a little before schedule. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have some invoices to sign, right? Yep. And as we're passing these down, you can remind us again, I know I've seen it in print, whether it's an email or something else, the schedule we need to be on so that everything we've expended this fiscal year can be paid for this year's funds. So our next meeting is July 5th. I would need uh, any information or invoices by Tuesday. This coming Tuesday? Yeah, because I have to post on Wednesday um, the, the agenda. Um, Beth is the only one in the office at the moment. Okay. And they're closed on Thursday next week. Yeah. Okay. So there's just a few more business days to get built in. For example, uh, Steve, what you spent on the deer repellent? And uh, yeah. I know I've got a little bit of mileage and some stuff. So next Tuesday yeah. is the deadline for getting these things to you. We want to get it on the next meeting. Um, if not, we have to do a process called encumbering, yeah. which is I have to create a memo to accounting to let them know we still need these paid, but they're in process. Yeah. If we don't encumber them by a certain date, any invoice or reimbursement has to wait till the next town meeting. Yeah. So, so it, it be is good to get them done. Yeah. Um, is this something? This is your word. Okay. And then that's one. Okay. Yeah, for the number. Yeah. And then yeah. And I won't sign the top. Yep. That's just your reimbursement page. I need it for you. Thanks, Sandy. That's one of them. Phil, I just had a, uh, not a personal art business question. Who is asking me? The Pembroke Watershed Association and Friends. Yeah, well, that was the question. Is who actually is, I guess, in charge of that old and pond work in Pembroke? Pembroke has made themselves a very complex site. It's, um, it's, it's interesting. Let's, Frank, you can talk it, about it. It's interesting uh, how they set it up. The person who wrote the uh, um, notice of intent was... I was not to because it was for me. You, know, you both signed, everyone else signed that, but not me. I'm sorry, was, Frank. was actually the treasurer of Pembroke. Uh, the, don't ask me why. The people who are in charge are the select board of Pembroke. The Pembroke Watershed Association is not involved in that. They are active in advocating for doing things that supposedly enhance well, the pond. But the, the Pembroke selectmen that are in charge. But the selectmen have the authority. But the people who came to the meeting weren't um, selectmen. The people who came to the meeting were primarily people who came to the most of whom are PWA members. Uh, and the chairman of the PWA was one of those who spoke the most, right. uh, advocating for the Allen. So, so they're citizens group, but they don't have... It's, they don't have the... Authority. The, the original, no, the original no, order no. of conditions that was issued in 2010 no, was presented by the PWA. Uh, and then it got extended and told to 2019. Uh, this one comes through from the town itself. Yeah, for the purposes of, of that, that hearing we had, the 
most important person was uh, the gentleman from Solitude Lake Management, Keith Gazeel, uh, and he spoke on in that role and on that behalf. Everyone else in the room was simply part of a uh, an invited public opinion. Thing. So I don't know why the question was that. I guess was somebody was confused as I was. Yeah. Who's actually in charge of that process? Yeah, I, I, it's hard to. I'd just like to say that we just issued that order of conditions for Hanson, and we had not yet gotten a response from the NHESP people of, from Division of Fish and Wildlife, and so we have a condition in our order that says the order is con contingent on NHESP approving the uh, treatment. We don't know yet whether they have approved it. So our signatures aren't the final say. The final say is when NHESP says their say. Yep. And if they say okay, then we're okay. If they don't say it's okay, then we haven't approved the thing. So we made that point at the meeting yeah. that we would right. make right. that condition. Well, I remember that. And people were receptive to that, I believe. I, I actually had hoped that, that they would come through with a letter before we issued it, but they didn't, so we issued it. But we, in the spirit of teamwork and hopefully common sense, did what we did. Well, we had to do it before next Tuesday anyway. There you go. Teamwork in action. <laughs> there are two things. Okay. One related to this, but there are two things on the select board agenda pertaining to the select to, to this department. The Hanson selectmen. The Hanson selectmen on Tuesday, we're in there twice. There is a um, appointment of a woman to our board, um, which must be. It. You and I looked at that, and I think it's misworded. Yeah. It speaks to appointing someone to the conservation commission. All five seats are filled. Okay. However. We have advocated for more associate okay. members. Associate members so much and we, even though we have two, we have Steve and we have Chris, uh, the select board looks ready to appoint more. Whether, and, uh, whether the other four colleagues of yours on the select board grasp what it is they're doing, we'll make it clear what they're doing and make, make sure their paperwork is clear, whatever they decide to do. And you, you said that you recognize this woman? Yes. She actually. Um, Unrelated to, to her interest in serving, uh, her family was the one that needed a, uh, a, um, a water service line run down their driveway from East Washington Street to their home because they had been on a well and they wanted to lay a water service and they came in with the paperwork and Frank, you might remember this. And because uh, the driveway itself had years ago been put through a wetland and there's a stream that goes underneath it and everything. Well, they went through that. and. Uh, I, I understand from what a little I know that uh, she's actually had a, 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 some kind of scientific training in her academic background, and I think she she's the person I'm thinking of. She might even have been in the military and had a lot of life experience too, but has a genuine interest and had actually applied to the State Department of Fish and Game to be part of their expansion. Stewardship team. That's what I think. Uh, TJ. Who's terms are this one? Good question. Um, maybe we should, I think this is a thought, we should issue an email to, an email, a note to the selectman saying that um, here are five members, this term is up, this person, don't no, put words in your mouth, wishes to be reappointed. So this other action would be uh, would have to look at as an associate member. I, I thought that at the last select board meeting, the slate of of mm -hmm. people were voted. That's what I was told again. I haven't received a letter yet. Has anyone else received a letter? I haven't, but I was at the department's office yesterday. Yeah. We told we told it then vote was taken. Okay. Again, we just want to. Reappoint. We want this the right things to be done in the right way, and uh, thanks for clarifying that. Um, every year, two of us, or a minimum of one, to turn it up, and uh, we'll just see. What was the other thing? 
What was the other thing? There was, there was the question oh, about the one with the um, pond management. I okay. to this meeting and it had been mentioned that the Conservation Commission does not have jurisdiction over the ponds, but the select board does. And the select board was not aware of that. So I, meant, I mentioned that to the select board. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure if they were not aware of it. There is human being evidence here. <laughs> Um, but keep going. No, I mean, uh, so I, I requested that it be put on the agenda and that coming meeting has been put on for this, this upcoming Tuesday. And I'm hoping for something, I'm hoping for both of you to be able to attend. If not, that's fine. But I'm hoping for something, a law or a rule. Definitive. Or something law, definitive. Definitive that states that what, what was said, that mm -hmm. this select board is under the you know, jurisdiction of the law. I think what some of were looking for, what they looked for, was clarity of responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, Frank's making some important notes, I'm sure. The uh, you know, almost every the stormwater management. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, <laughs> don't stormwater is not on the don't side. start. Uh, stormwater is one. No, 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 no. It just happens to receive a lot of stormwater. The uh, uh, the business of all across Massachusetts, almost every community has ponds or lakes or something like that in it. And whether they manage it or not, who knows? But some do, and there has to be models or examples of how other people are doing it and under what authority do they have a local bylaw? There's there's some state law with whom some of us aren't acquainted that speaks to that. There's certainly the Great Pond uh, legal background, but the uh, seeing it on the Selectman's agenda, I didn't know anything about that until we walked in and you showed me about an hour ago. <laughs> I, I, I mentioned it, when you mentioned it to me, I said I'm going to mention it to see if it's put on the agenda yeah. so we can discuss it. And it was put on, and I, I'm hoping you can have it. Progress. Clarity. I, I couldn't find anything on the web. There, there isn't any. There isn't anything. Uh, what we could the do. Ponds belong to the people of the town. The people are represented by the select board. The conservation commission has its jobs to do. One of which is to administer and enforce the Wetlands Protection Act, and the other one is to acquire and manage open space. Neither one of those things entail managing the ponds. Where's the Board of Health coming in? I'm sorry? Where's the Board of Health? Aren't they? I can take a run at that, and you can correct me if you're wrong. When there's human contact with, let's say, pond water, that's where they come in. If there is a town-sponsored activity, such as swimming lessons, or a, a or a, a town beach, public beach, they are required to monitor the water for coliform bacteria, and in this day and age, also for uh, blue-green bacteria, things that are harmful in excess. Uh, well, if there's a bloom, they have to. Act. Right, and when the, when when Thresholds are exceeded for either coliforms, which I think is a thousand CFUs per ml, and uh, the blooms, which are the 80,000 cells, uh, uh, they have to act and post and call a halt to the human contact. Uh, but they, may, they don't have responsibility to manage the health of the community. Yeah, they don't introduce fixes to that sort of thing. It may be, and I, this is a question I have. Could it be that some, maybe just a small handful of communities and municipalities in the state have enacted a local bylaw that delegates some in some manner, some responsibility from the select board, what have you, to conservation? I don't know that. We, we can certainly find out. There, there are a few towns, I think when you Google things, you find information that could possibly offer a model that we don't yet have here. Just a thought. There's two items at least that I recall that we, that we as a conservation commission have dealt with directly with the ponds. Mm -hmm. We did that last week mm -hmm. when we about open ponds 
Well, that was that was a. Um, that was a notice of intent. The Protection Act. Yes. Yeah. Wait. And then the other one was green muffins. Yeah, that was us recommending to the selectmen, just as a favor to them, that it would be smart and wise and important thing for them to do, and they did. Okay. Even though we did all the work of, of administering it. Is that kind of what I'm hoping happens at the at the least? Is that this commission provides direction to the select board? Um, In our spare time. I can tell you one specific thing or a group of things that I personally think makes a lot of sense for the town to do. We've done one pond study, which is one set pond, which was with a state earmark in the annual environmental bond bill that was passed way back in 2016 or 2017, which our state rep made happen at the request of one or more of our select board. That, on a one-time basis, gave the town $20,000 to look at one step pond to look at what its problems were because we know it blooms and stinks and everything else every summer. Uh, at our recommendation, uh, that $20,000 was used to hire Solitude Lake Management to study the heck out of the pond. They studied the, the depth, they did a bathymetric study, how much sediment was underneath the water, the bottom of the water column, what kind of vegetation was in it, what kind of water chemistry and temperatures dissolved oxygen. They, they did uh, a fairly thick report of uh, sort of early, mid, and late season 2017 uh, uh, parameters for the pond. Because we had never done it before. We didn't know what the nitrogen levels were, phosphorus levels, temperature, oxygen. We now have a report on the shelf which uh, says all that. And then we added a little more the next year because there's some money left on the fish populations here. So we have a lot of information now about this pond. We don't have a lot of information about Maquan Pond or Indian Head Pond, all in the same watershed. It would be nice to get that information. So that's a long way of saying, I think studies of those other two ponds for the purpose of setting a baseline, where are we right now? And of the different things, which ones are, are okay, which ones are borderline, which ones are problems? And then you begin to think about what to do. That's all that. As long as it doesn't sit on the shelf, that's all that. Right. Um, everyone cares about the quant pond because it's so visible and is used so much, so that's, I'm sure, the place to start. Or to help just those coliforms and and probably do the cyanobacteria as well. One of the problems of Maquan Pond is that there are so few people who live around it. I mean, the typical way that action gets taken is that the people around the pond <coughs> see it deteriorating and they come together, a la Pembroke Watershed Association, mm -hmm. for example. There are many of those around the state. They're especially popular on Cape Cod. Uh, they come together and advocate for action to make the pond better, to recover it. Uh, a quant pond doesn't have that level of, of uh, population that you would expect a group of people to come together and say, help us clean up this pond. The only thing that Naquan Pond has going for it is that it's the town beach. And I guarantee you when the when the uh, weeds start blowing across the lake into the cove, we'll be hearing about cleaning up the lake. Mm. Uh, but until then, the selectmen probably won't. Well, I'll just, I'll just, excuse me, TJ, you said, uh, the equivalent to the people around like right now, there's three or four people who do live around Pequon Pond who have come forward as individuals, but not in an effective manner with one voice and, and a lot of other registered voters with them. So there's been a small amount, not much. There's also been, currently in connection with that, the 
uh, what we now call the Camp Kiwanee Committee, present both direct and indirect people, uh, interest in the pond. Uh, it's a backdrop for a wedding photo, but also people who use the beach. So there is interest, but it has not been organized interest. And that sort of thing, we just need to feel our way through that. I'm, I'm sorry, kind of funny. With all due respect, this important topic behind the meeting. I'm looking at the clock. Yep. So um, we will talk before and at the next Tuesday on Sunday Street. At this point, we have a need to read a notice of hearing, a public hearing notice that Dr. perhaps has in front of him. I've got to hear if you need it, Dave. Okay, let's commence the reading of that hearing since it's a few minutes after. Land and Conscience Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, June 21st, 2023, 8 p.m. in the Hampton Town Hall. Two five point two Liberty Street has a mass. Pursuant to a request for determination of applicability for Florence Cardigan, the current parcel project proposal to construct a 1468 foot in law apartment in addition to an existing structure. Proposed work will occur within 100 feet buffer zone, the border vegetated one land at 126 Pierce Avenue, Nat 41, Lot 8, for Lawrence Cardigan. The applicant is filing in the Massachusetts Weapon and Protection Act, Mass General Law, Section 141, Section 40, the Town of Hampton, Section 5, Section 313, Section 5, and Rules and Regulations, Hampton Conservation Commission, Philip Clemens, Chairman. So, Mr. Tariani, uh, we have a drawing in front of us which I believe relates to that. Uh, we'll let you so to lay out for us briefly what you have in mind and why, we could guess, but we'd rather have you tell us. Absolutely. Oh, um, sit or stand, whatever you're most comfortable doing. Okay, um, thank you. Thank, thanks so much. I, I also have uh, in front of me uh, Dr. Oh, yeah. Frank and Dr. Frank, the uh, 61 um, certificates. Oh, great. Thank uh, you. I have quite a few of them. Lan would be <laughs> delighted thank to have you. Thank you so oh, much. Hey. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Thank you very much, uh, and, and good evening, everyone. So, yes, my name is Lawrence Tadiani uh, from 150th Ave, um, and I'm looking to put a uh, 14 by 58 edition um, attached to everything's place, uh, to which the back corner um, of the edition, as well as the bulkhead, uh, will um, intersect the 100 foot buffer zone, as well as uh, temporarily um, there will be a trench that goes from the addition alongside the existing house, so connecting to the existing septic as close as possible um, so that we can put a toilet in the addition as well. So we'll just be performing uh, that trench and once complete that trench will be refilled back in and uh, uh, replaced with some native wildlife vegetation. Uh, in addition, uh, the, the plan you see in front of us uh, wasn't the one we actually originally started with. We actually had it rotated towards uh, the wetland uh, before we ah. knew about its existence. And um, uh, upon learning uh, about the wetland, uh, what we did was we actually paid the architect and surveyor to rotate it 90 degrees so that it actually faces away uh, from the wetland before um, actually from the seawall, uh, which is what you see here today. Um, the addition will have a full basement, uh, which will require you know, excavation of soil, uh, but we plan to ensure that uh, that excavation is uh, piled outside of uh, the 100 foot buffer zone and tarped and still docked uh, nightly, such that um, any potential rain overnight will you know, ensure that it can't potentially uh, run into the, the wetland there. Uh, in addition, on the note of silt stock, uh, we plan to put some silt stock along the 50-foot buffer zone uh, to add additional layers of protection uh, from, from any activities around there. Uh, furthermore, um, on the west-hand side of the, of the property is where we plan to instruct any crews or, or, or excavation uh, vehicles and not through uh, the buffer zone itself, so they'll go from uh, the direction you're looking there would be that right hand side and then would come around such that construction crews are going through that, that buffer zone um, to minimize any um, you know vehicle traffic or have you will. Um, uh, finally the, the, the excavation site is um, all 
grassland, it's all, it's all lawn, there'll be no um, removal of, of, of trees in that area, um, as well as um, a, a quick interesting fact about me and my wife. So my wife actually works for the New England Aquarium in ah. their sea turtle rescue department, and uh, I've been on the green team um, through my work uh, for many, many years. So that, it's all to say that we're very, um, you know, uh, environmentally minded, and so we want to do not just what um, complies with the bylaw, but we want to make sure we're really uh, protecting that wetland. Hence, why we rotated it and paid someone to do that before we mm -hmm. the um, So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this drawing we have in front of us. Uh, I believe North Arrow points down, so it's a little, we have to just rotate ahead the 180 degrees, but we can do that, we, we can do a lot of things. Um, I see the address is 126 Pierce Avenue. This is closer towards the Robinson Street end and a little further away from the High Street end, right? It's not that long of a street. Correct. And I'm looking at the slopes and things. Uh, if I recall, the wetland that is that we're speaking of there, there's flags one through six, Placed by ECR, it looks like uh, that. I think has a lot of uh, characteristics of a vernal pool. Uh, if it's the part of, of PS Avenue, thinking of uh, maybe our, our our agent can speak to that. Uh, and with any other comments, Frank, we're interested in, in your thoughts. The uh, wetland is in fact bordering what appears to be a potential vernal pool and the wetland itself is what we would call an isolated bordering wetland. So it technically doesn't come under the Wetlands Protection Act. It comes under the Hanson Wetlands Protection Bylaw. Which is why the bylaw was written, because there are valuable things that the state doesn't quite get to, so the town did and hence the attention being given to this. I, I, I think I think that uh, the presentation that uh, the gentleman has made is right on the right on the money, and uh, I'd recommend you give him a negative three. Questions or comments from the board? Ed. You mentioned that to, to around where the house is going to be built, there is no trees coming down. Are there other trees? coming down at all for this whole project for the building of the house? Uh, there is one outside the 100-foot buffer zone. It's an apple tree uh, right on the corner uh, near that 58. The rest is uh, grassland as well. And there's one shrub, yeah. Uh, but it's all, it's, that's our backyard, uh, to be honest. So we're <laughs> just using the part of the backyard to put it out. Probably isn't particularly relevant, but I'm just trying to get a handle on on the deep. Um, do we know roughly when this house was built? Anyone, either you? Uh, our, our existing house was built in 1915. Okay. Actually, 14. Because you know what I think part of the house was built out of, Karen. Our great grandparents' barn from Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? At, at 1222 Main Street, there used to be an enormous barn with yeah. photos and things like that. It was taken down around 1915. Okay. And uh, we were told by a mother who was born that year and who misses the barn, who missed the barn while she was here, uh, that part of it's in that house. Uh, I just wanted to, that clarifies my exactly where it is. But the point in front of us is. Uh, we see a project being proposed. Uh, was the and and also I noticed and the reason I ask is the hundred foot buffer zone goes right through the existing dwelling. Correct. But that was that dwelling existed approximately fifty to sixty years before the Wellness Protection Act, so no surprises there. Uh, any further discussion or things that are closer to the point than what I was saying? If not, the chair would entertain a motion to close the hearing and issue a negative three determination and approve the project presented, uh, potentially with any special conditions that our there staff would recommend, yes. as we all do. Do I hear that motion? So moved. Motion been made and seconded. Uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Staying five zero zero. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
I will say this, and this actually relates to the resource area. Yep. Long ago, mm -hmm. I mean, like 50 years ago when I was much, much younger than I am now, I remember being in this neighborhood and a young boy had in his hand a spotted salamander, one of those beautiful things that requires a brittle pool to breed in. Mm -hmm. He thought it was an alligator. <laughs> and even at that young age, a few of us who knew a little bit of our nature corrected him. Mm -hmm. uh, it was I, a crocodile <laughs> still. <laughs> it was a it was a yellow spotted poison spitting salmon. No, it was a. Uh, we hope there's still some of those there in that resource area. It'll come to you in the mail. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Um, if I may ask a very simple question. Sure. This is the first time I've ever done this. What does the negative three mean? Or would that be? Different? I will. I will let our okay. agent explain it because my tongue gets tied when I it, describe it. It means that the rules apply, but you don't have to file a notice of intent. Thank you. It's the impact is minimal enough if any, that we're comfortable uh, simply approving it as proposed. Okay. Wonderful. Um, I was feeling a little weird to come in and try and get something approved to get it nice. <laughs> yeah. That's where, my, that's where my tongue gets tied. Uh, we wish you the best. Uh, Thank you. And if you need a new apple tree, we're sure you'll see to that. You know, <laughs> Well, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for, for your time today. Thank, thank, you. thank you. You're very welcome. We've accomplished that. We've accomplished many other things. I don't see anything else on the agenda. What have we missed? We will be next meeting on, I think I heard, July 5th. Yep. And, oh, wait a minute. Uh, what, oh, that's a Wednesday. That's right. Yeah, the Wednesday. I keep thinking Before we actually adjourn, sure. Let me ask: uh, Is there any movement on signage for the signing of the bill? Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.